Hi. One of the things we wanted to talk to you today about was uh, where is God in our times of crisis and what do we do? Uh, does God's word speak uh, to our our crisis? And I, and I think it does. Uh, I put this in the newsletter, but I just want to highlight uh, some really important truths from God's word. Uh, the first one is uh, John chapter 14, verse 1, just to remind us of what Jesus said. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And so uh, one of the things that we want to do is take our eyes and focus off uh, being fearful and anxious and focus on God. Uh, so instead of being fearful, uh, we face those fears, which are real. I get it. Those anxieties, they're real. Those doubts, I know. But how do we do that by faith? And I just want to take you to uh, 1 Kings chapter 19. And if you know the context, uh, Elijah has just uh, uh, knocked it out of the park. He's defeated the prophets of Baal. Uh, he's outrun uh, um, Ahab's uh, chariot. Uh, he's called people back to faith in God. But now Jezebel, who is Ahab's wife, wants to kill him. And he runs into the wilderness uh, afraid for his life. And so I want to contrast really quickly from 1 Kings chapter 19, Eliza's choice versus facing your fears and anxieties and doubts by faith. So in uh, verse 3, uh, what he sought to do was isolate. And a lot of people isolate when they're fearful. They, they don't want to be around anybody and they're, they're scared. They're, they're hiding for their lives. It feels right, but don't trust your feelings. I instead, you need companionship. And uh, uh, it's forcing yourself to connect with others, even through a phone call or a text or, or uh, uh, some type of Zoom uh, connection that you can do with others. Uh, verse 4, uh, he was lonely. Um, uh, again, by isolating, uh, sometimes we feel like we're the only ones facing these things. And the important thing is, is to know that you're not alone. Uh, what what we should practice, there are times when we need to be with others, and there are times when we need to be alone. That's important. But those times of being alone is to focus our attention on the Lord, not just focus on our problems. Uh, verse 4 also talks about this idea that, that Elijah, in isolating and being lonely, uh, had this escapist mentality. He, was, he just wanted God, you know, uh, suicide by God, if you will. And, and what God uh, needed to do with him was to give him right thinking. And that's what we need in our times of fear and anxiety. We need right thinking, right thinking about who we are and right thinking about God. Um, while you might know how you feel and what you think, uh, that kind of thinking is suspect when we're fearful. Verse 5, uh, he was exhausted. Uh, Winston Churchill uh, leading Britain through the World War II, uh, said these profound words, fatigue makes cowards of us all. And I'm speaking to moms and dads right now with those kids. Uh, you're around them 24-7, and you're hoping for the day to ship them back off to school. I get it. We've done it ourselves. Uh, but what we need at that time is rest, uh, good uninterrupted sleep, and to be able to follow routine. Uh, then also uh, physical deprivation. When we're fearful and when we're anxious, uh, we don't take care of ourselves uh, physically. We don't eat right. We don't, uh, some of us maybe overeat, but others of us just, uh, we just start losing weight. And what we need to do during these times of fear and anxiety is to eat right regular meals. Uh, eat, eat the right portions, eating the right food. Uh, don't practice that garbage in, garbage out stuff. You know, it's really easy to, to fill up on all the things that you know that you shouldn't eat. Again, lethargy. He just, he just kind of uh, gave up. Uh, verse 8, uh, fear and depression can lead us to giving up and just doing nothing. And it's really important that, that you and I remember that during this time that we continue to exercise. Get out for a walk, uh, do some physical work that will get the heart pumping and, and get the muscles moving. And then verse 10, uh, there was a lot of self-pity. And when we're fearful and anxious, uh, we tend to, this is as far as we see. We see to the end of our nose, woe is me, lots of self-pity. 
pity. And I'll just say whining doesn't work. It never does. And it takes a lot of energy and it leads us to a downward spiral mentally. Instead, we need right thinking. Uh, the key to right thinking about ourselves and our situation, and most importantly, about God. And in verse 18, uh, we need God to change our perspective. And that leads to uh, uh, verse 11 and 12. There was a lack of worship in uh, Elijah's life. Uh, he had doubts. And, and understand that doubts can lead to deeper faith. But what we really need is a fresh glimpse of God, don't we? It's in, in those depressing times, those anxious moments, those fearful moments that we need to worship the Lord. We need to get our eyes on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We need to worship his holy name. And then finally, in verse 16, he, uh, we have this idea that we have to do it all alone. And uh, you can't do it all alone. Uh, crises are, are to be shared with others. And um, we need to develop others around you. Uh, God gave him Elijah. And uh, you have family members. And you have the church family that is here to support you. Galatians 6.2 says, bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. So as we uh, talk about uh, facing your fear, we want you to face it in faith and we want to do it together. I hope you'll be a part of the Laurelwood family to do that.